We've been doing casual and impromptu Q and A's at these things. Does anyone have any cues that we can A? Okay. What's up? Your favorite crisp flavor? Thai sweet cheese, man. Sweet. Ready salted. Ready salted. Well, not ready salted. Just nice. It's not Walkers. Walkers can do us. It's because Ben is so salty on Twitter. Yeah, I just like. I like a plain, plain kettle chip or a Tyrrell's. None of this, none of this like flavored Walker stuff. <laughs> a disc? I've never eaten disco. a disco. They're very salt and vinegar. Yeah. Yeah. Probably just likes crisps. <laughs> uh, what was your last one? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's It's a Roland SPDSX. It's a, a pack. <laughs> Yeah, drum pad essentially. Yeah, we'll oh. just leave it to the tracks. <laughs> uh, hey. Love it. Yes. Love it. I really like my yeah. There we oh. go. It's a four out of four from as it is. Way in the back. Yo, what's up? Oh. I have no idea what, what you're band, saying. Was it what band most inspired the sound of this album? Was that the question? Okay. As it is. <laughs> Selective pairing. <laughs> I think in a big way, there's a band called Armor for Sleep, and they released a record called What to Do When You're Dead. Um, it's a it's a not so dissimilar concept record, one that I really loved growing up. Um, they like championed the kind of post hardcore emo thing, had a very similar haircut, but more <laughs> more importantly, they had the same producer that we went with because we love that record so much. So I encourage you to check out What to Do When You're Dead by Armor for Sleep. It's a very good band and album. Uh, yo, hi. Yes. yes. Uh, you put whatever you want on your pizza and you don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I wish Ben cared about me that much. Uh, one more, shall we? What's up? It's all good. What would you guys say your favorite song is on the album and why? I know it's a Great Depression, but... Um, I like the end a lot. We actually wrote that really early on. We wrote the Great Depression and the end very early on, so we kind of knew where the record started and ended, and I think that helped in a big way. Um, but that song's been around for a long time. The demo used to give me goosebumps, and the current version still gives me goosebumps when it like kind of goes from the bridge into the outro. Um, and yeah, if you if you kind of can keep something that powerful that you made and it still affects you like that, I think that's kind of special. I think I'm gonna say the Reaper today. Yeah. 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 I, I I think there's something I remember hearing my voice next to Aaron Gillespie's for the first time, and I was just like, "Fuck, what is my life?" <laughs> so yeah, it was. I'm just just how weird that song is in a lot of places. I I'm just really proud of that one. I think you really outdid yourself on that one. Yeah. To learn how to play it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come see how he does in November. <laughs> Talk about it. We have one more. And this song only really works if you sing along. It's um it's the wounded world, so sing the, the part that you know you're supposed to sing. <laughs> Sisters, young and old. We're all to blame for the wounded world. She had black hearts and abandoned souls. We're all to blame for the wounded world. Brothers, sisters, young and tall. I'm back. 
and meet you and say hello and it's going to be cool. Th thank you for listening to us. In a bit.